Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here. Those of you that know me, you know I really like creation science. So I'm just going to do some discussing. I used to do like reviews on each of these like independently and i said you know what uh, we're just going to start discussing them kind of uh, all in one so this comes from the institute of creation research it's a free magazine acts and facts you can go online and uh, you get that and days of praise free and you get days and praise delivered to your inbox free so it's totally free i don't have anything to do with icr i don't make any money from them they don't even know i'm doing this probably you know i've done videos on them before so they may have seen the videos or something but you know what i'm saying and so it's just it's a great thing i can't believe it so whales no evidence for evolution so this is done by malcolm bowden and uh, it was just fantastic because whales, because of the supposed like uh, small legs, is considered to be um, one of the hugest proofs for evolution. And so you read this. These are like little peer reviewed type papers is what I would do. And they, I mean, they have references in here and uh, that, you know, Everything from the the, uh, the bone structure to the breathing structure to the milk, the structure of the milk, uh, the constituents of the milk, it couldn't have evolved. It, it was an all or nothing proposition, as everybody knows if you just really think about it. All right, so frequently asked questions. This is another really good pamphlet. This is done by Dr. David Rosevere, PhD in FRSC, which I think is Fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry. But uh, I really enjoyed these little questions they ask. Um, like it says, even some bishops say the story of Adam and Eve is a myth. What do creationists say? These come from the creation science movement of the UK. Um, is there any scientific evidence that supports creation? How can creation be credible when all the scientists believe in uh, evolution? Like, but they really don't. Like a world-renowned, uh, uh, what's his name, James Tour, chemist. Uh, he doesn't believe in evolution. They just did that study. Uh, somebody from Rockefeller University, University of Basel, said, you know, everything arose spontaneously 100 to 200,000 years ago. They said, we believe in evolution. And, and so this really blew our minds. Uh, but we know that dinosaurs became extinct 65 million years ago, on and on and so forth. Surely the fossils prove evolution. So this was a really good thing, too. Genesis in the Wycliffe Bible of 1388. One of my very favorite authors, Bill Cooper. And uh, so I've got teaching on Scripture. You know, like I've got some uh, old replicas of Wycliffe Bibles. Like one's one of 700 or something. And so I've studied, I've read a lot in the Wycliffe Bible. Cooper's actually done a phenomenal thing of the Wycliffe Bible. But, you know, how does it present Genesis? A lot of good stuff. So he's one of my very favorite authors. But that's a very important thing. A very important thing. In the time of Peleg, the vision of the earth. Um, so this is Andrew Sibley, Bachelor of Science with Honors, PG Dip. He's a professional meteorologist, EDM Open, FRM. So I think it's a fellow Royal Meteorological Society is what he is. Now, probably the best postulation about Peleg that I have ever read is uh, from... Uh, in the Beginning by Walt Brown, who's got a Ph.D. from MIT, he teaches like the Army War College. Absolutely unbelievable. Now, you can get all these pamphlets for 15 cent each from the creation science movement. The overwhelming number of people that watch this channel are from the United States. Second is from England, though, and uh, third is Canada. But... Uh, you know, this is just good stuff. And so being in the States, I was, you know, I was a little concerned, like ordering stuff. But people had told me the Royal Mail was like phenomenal. And they are right. They are right on about that. The Royal Mail is incredible. So this is just a really good thing on how it wasn't necessarily a Pangeic thing. It was more after the flood, uh, some of the rising 
tides from melting ice caps or something like that. I can't remember right now. The origin of birds, this, you can tell by how much I marked this up that this was a really good one. And again, because of the feathers, because of the barbules in the feathers, that uh, birds could not have evolved. Because, I mean, you pluck a few feathers from a bird and you inhibit its ability to fly. So it's kind of has to be a perfect precision instrument for flight. And then, like a lot of their breathing systems and a lot of their muscles on their sternum to flap the wings. And then it goes into really good about... Uh, dinosaurs with feathers that maybe these are omni type animals like a duckbill platypus that they just had feathers much like an ostrich has feathers but doesn't use them for flying or a chicken has feathers and doesn't use them to fly except for short distances also has a wonderful thing which uh i know the guy he's got two phds um wells does on Darwin's finches beaks. They're still finches. They're, they didn't come, they're not, not finches. And so microevolutionary or adaptogens and adaptations, no way prove evolution. And this is just a little thing about science in the Bible. It's kind of cool. Now, I, I noticed there was a couple things in here to me that was a little sketchy. <laughs> I remember reading through this one, but there were some really good ones. And it really, it's answering the whole deal about the Bible's not a scientific textbook. And, uh, but everything that it says about science is right. You know, you know you're struggling when the biggest thing, it says that the sun rose. And they're like, the sun doesn't rose, the earth rotates. And it's like, yeah, but we still say sunrise and sunset. I mean, this is just a manner of speaking. This is not a scientific inaccuracy here. Okay, so acts and facts. I'll let you look at the cover of that, everything. They do stuff for children. They're just fantastic. And it is amazing. 38% of Americans still believe in six-day creationism. And uh, so I, I don't think it should be expunged from the public square. I'll let you look. This is the subject you're going to get to. I love how Acts and Facts does this because if I ever don't want to read an entire article, this is the April 2019 issue. Again, it's free of charge. I, you know, I just get it all the time. Um, that they just send it on, you know. But they have a little uh, summary section for every article. So article highlights. Theophanies in the Old Testament. So it's not all just creation as well. Of course, Jesus is the creator. There's a reason that'd be in there. But uh, they would have some theological articles as well. But they would be proponents that, you know, Adam was congruent with dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were on the ark. And as crazy as that seems, I would tend to say that's true. Look up the Nile Palestina mosaic and look at the. Uh, close to 200 sightings of dinosaurs just in the UK along. Read Marco Polo's instance of dinosaurs pulling the Emperor of China's chariot. And uh, on and on and so forth. A, a knight killing a dinosaur in Italy in like the 1500s. Uh, climate alarmism in the age of the earth. That's really good. Uh, marine fossils mixed with Hell Creek dinosaurs. That's a really good article. So I've done a video on climate change recently. I was saying if climate change is happening, it's, uh, it's probably because the polar ice caps are still shrinking somewhat from the flood and the glaciers are still shrinking somewhat from Noah's flood. But uh, I'm not sure it's anthropogenic. I'm not sure it's man-made. Um, recent humans with archaic features upend evolution, which that's kind of interesting. Excellent little article there. So really like that because it's true. Um, 
new distributed problem solving model for population adaptation. So here's the article highlights on this. It's an evolutionist emphasized competition in which a few emerge victorious at the expense of the many. An engineering based model could see a population of problem solving organism that functions like a human designed distributed computing system. This model emphasizes cooperation over competition where both the individual and the population are valuable. In this decentralized population adaptation model, new traits are produced and distributed in a targeted problem solving matter rather than randomly. This model expects rapid convergence on solutions rather than slow evolution and so it's a three-page article it's done by a couple of people it's got references people say well, why aren't these people in peer-reviewed journals well a lot of it has to do you remember back in the 1800s maybe studying the history of evolution and creation the X society where T.H. Huxley and that group with the X Society made sure that the only people that were promoted into academic positions were evolutionists. And something kind of akin to that with Dewey and others happened in the United States of America. Not saying it's the X Society, but you know, and so, um, but it's not necessarily based on facts. And you've got places even. Uh, back retroactively taking away people's degrees when they find out they're creationist. And most people just listen to what they hear. Okay, are fossils just rock shaped like bones? The answer is no. It has the, the fossils with blood on them, termite sky skyscrapers hidden in plain view, T-Rex tours and testimony. So let me just show you this one. We'll let this be the last one. So this is just discussing some uh, issues in creation science for your perusal. You may be an atheist, you hate my, I hate my gut. Usually I found like how atheist and evolutionists respond. Their first thing is why do you lie? And then they say um, peer-reviewed journals and then they say you're not a scientist. Truth is truth regardless. I might not be a mechanic, but I can pump gas, you know. And so, uh, um, it's not a field that you necessarily have to, because Darwin wasn't a scientist either, uh, when you go into all of that. So, God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.